And we're live. We are indeed live, Saints fans. Welcome back to another very exciting episode of Saints TV Live. I'm joined by Max to talk all things, all things about the St Kilda Football Club and especially all about the win on Saturday night. That was a fantastic win. I'm sure we can all agree on that. First things first, Max, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah very good, Jordan. Um, I don't know, we, we saw you at the game, um, had a pre-game drink and maybe a few too many afterwards. So it was a very good Saturday night. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, um, I think you had a bit bit more than I did afterwards, but nonetheless, still a fantastic Saturday night and one that we can build on and, yeah, I'm sure look back on as, as I did by watching the replay almost, well, not immediately after the game, but certainly on Sunday. That was what I did yeah. was watch the replay. So, yes, very exciting times to be a Saints fan. Um, before we... Get into the nitty gritty, Max. Did you want to talk a bit about the Betley Social on Sunday? Yep. So first away game of the year, playing Collingwood at four thirty, four thirty-five, something like that. Um, Sunday. I Arbos. believe it's a. Sorry, it's a, I believe it's a four fifty start. Four fifty start. There you go. Um, yeah, we just everyone get down to the Bentley Social Saints TV Disco. I think uh, the formality started around three, and if you want to get down there, hopefully reserve yourself a seat. Um, get on the Saints TV Facebook event and just make sure you're RSVP that you're going. So we make sure that we've got a packed house down there. Um, you don't want to make, you don't want to not RSVP and we get, we fill out the house too early on and you might have to go down the road to Sonda or, or somewhere else in Bentley, but definitely get down. I'll definitely be there. Jordan might be there for the pregame stuff. Um, Marshy, Joycey and Jakey should be there as well. So it should be a great afternoon for Saints footy um, against the, one of the best sides in the comp against Collingwood. Yep, and we'll talk about the pies a bit later. But, yeah, make sure you RSVP with going on the Facebook event. It's really important. I think we've got about 100 people going, but another 200 on the interested. And, obviously, the max capacity at the Bentley Social is 250. So make sure you get in there before it fills all the spots. Now, Max, good game yeah. on Saturday night. <laughs> Yes, as you would say, let's really sit back and sniff the roses. Um, just what's your gen- <laughs> what's your general thoughts on the game? Um, yeah, it was. I, th- I thought it was a tremendous performance from start to finish. They tried to push us early on in the first, but but we held on, um, hit another gear in the third quarter, and, and sort of blitzed them in the second half. So, so what did you think of the game? Oh, I was I was absolutely blown away with how well we performed. Even in the first quarter, you felt the Gold Coast were really giving it all they had. And that, you know, we were hanging in there and it was only a matter of time before the damn wall burst. Just a, just another fantastic performance um, by all, all all accounts. Great performance by the players, great performance upstairs by the coaches again, and great performance by the fans as well. A relatively decent turnout. I think it was like 20, was it 21,000? Something like that. Something like that, uh, for yeah. A, yeah, for an Easter long weekend and for a Gold Coast Suns game, I'd say that's a, that's a pretty good effort, Sainers. So well done, and make sure, make sure you keep getting down. Maybe maybe we shouldn't have twenty one thousand people go to the Bentley Social on on Sunday, but make sure we can we'll look to increase those numbers going forward in terms of game attendance. Max, who was your your best on on Sunday? Oh, look, Saturday, so, yeah, there was so many to pick from. I don't think this was a game where you could say. Um, there was there was anyone that played badly, um, which is going to make it very hard for selection come this this Sunday. But we'll get onto that a bit later. Uh, I think, you, look personally, Mitch Owens he was phenomenal. Twenty seven touches, two goals, fair few great marks. Just got to every contest. I thought Higgins five goals really has hit his form uh, the last two weeks. Um, so I think I think either of those two, but everyone sort of played their role. Wilkie down back, Dougal Howard they took. 30 odd marks between them something something ridiculous like that but yeah i i, I really couldn't put a pep uh, ping a best on how about you um yeah same boat it was incredibly difficult to to pick a best on i'd say my top 3 would be the guys you mentioned already higgins mitch owens and well maybe a standout for me also was jack sinclair the way he was able mm. to run and carry with the ball up in the guts in midfield you know, the, the fact that we were able to rely on uh, Wangani Malera and Stocker down back meant that he had more freedom to play up the guts. And that was really exciting to see. In the, was it the second or third quarter where he had that little 
not little, had that massive intercept mark and and kicked it to Caminiti. Well, hand passed it to Caminiti and then slotted it away. And I thought that was emblematic of how he played all night. Was just a lot of run and carry and just incredibly skilled and just just very very pleasing to see. Yeah, what a weapon Jack Sinclair was coming in the guts. He started off his career as a small forward. We've tried him in the guts. We've tried him on the wing. He looks like probably the best halfback in the comp right now. And then just to have that flexibility to go on the midfield and create a different burst of speed, a little bit more dynamic coming out of there. It was, yeah, he, he did everything he wanted in the midfield, um, stacking up against Took Miller and Matt Rowe, who Matt Rowe, I didn't notice he played only 12 touches for him. And I don't know if you listened to a bit of the pregame commentary, they were hyping him up as the best clearance player in the game. So not sure what happened there to him on, on Saturday night. No, I'm uh, not sure if Matt Rowell even, even got off the plane at Melbourne Airport, but, you know, 12 touches, maybe he did. Well, we've heard about our opinion of who was best on. We'll take a look at the coaches' votes from today. For those who don't know, the two coaches pick uh, their, their best player. The best on gets five, second best gets four, and so on and so forth and what have you. There you go. That's Jack Sinclair getting a five and a four. We obviously don't know who's from who. But, yeah, Sinclair, Owens, Higgins, Crouch, Wilkie and Ross look like the best players on ground. Max, would you say that's a fair analysis of how you would break down the votes? Yep, absolutely. Sinclair, Owens and Higgins definitely deserve the most. Pick whoever you want. There wasn't – you couldn't go wrong. Um, Seb Ross played terrific. His goal against Tuke Miller, the second goal of the game, I think it was, or second goal for the Saints, that was freakish. Um yeah, Cal Wilkie down back was the general and Brad Crouch did all the hard work as he always does, really picking up the load from from Jack Steele being out injured. Yeah, just a terrific game all round for those involved. And the Seb Ross goal, well, we were going to get into to goal of the game, but I guess we'll, we'll jump there now. Seb Ross, are we sure his name is Seb or is it really Dustin Martin? Because that was just, <laughs> the, the, the fend off was just unbelievable. I, I literally jumped out of my seat. I was so excited. That was just an incredible goal. Yeah, couldn't agree more. He, I thought it was Mason Wood for a sec. I was on the opposite side of the ground, so it was a bit hard to see. I just saw a left boot go. But, geez, fending off Took Miller, who looked like he had him ta- ta- sorry, tackled. Um, I don't know. That's it, Yeah, there's not, there's not really anything you can speak of. That's just freakish, um, that goal. What, do you, what, what was your best goal of the game? Other, other than the Seb Ross brilliance? Oh, uh, it would have to be this little guy, well, not so little, 191 centimetres that we picked up through our Next Generation Academy, who, speaking of which, has just been nominated for the round four rising star. Mitch Owen's goal, what a fantastic goal that was and what an overall just insane performance he gave on Saturday night. Mm, yeah, couldn't agree more. That was, yeah, again, freakish stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Kane Corn said that was a grade of material on on uh, the round so far. Um, yeah, he, that's only eleven games in, and he's doing this sort of stuff already. It's and this is in a forward line that is very makeshift. This is not his natural position. It, it's yeah, I'm I'm really excited for the future of the Saints. Yeah, Mitch Owens just threw himself at everything. You said uh, you know the volcano said he was an A plus. A plus forward. I, I think he meant. I think he meant a double plus, a triple plus forward because he was just sensational. Threw himself at everything. Just, just showed no fear whatsoever, and was very selfless with with his decision making. And I think the whole team is being selfless at the moment, which is fantastic. Even Jade Gresham, who some have accused of being a bit selfish, whether that's just you know selfishness or, or inability to to lower his eyes and see teammates. I think, yeah, Mitch was was superb in in the selflessness aspect on on Saturday night and just all around a fantastic performance from him yeah just uh just with my favorite goal of the game it was the Brad Hill one from the set shot kicked it off to Gresham twice the umpires kept telling him bring the ball back bring the ball back and he said nah stuff this I'm gonna kick it myself and it, yeah I thought that was awesome um very 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 funny and Brad Hill didn't realize he kicked two goals I know he had that one that I've just mentioned 22 touches and two goals. He looked like he was just trying, 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 trying his hardest on defense. Missed a few smothers, but two years ago, even last year, you tell him he's not doing that sort of effort. He's not trying to put his body on the line to go for smothers. Um, 
pl- play a lot of defensive effort. It's yeah, really good to see that the entire team's buying into to Ross's philosophy. And geez, what an asset he's been uh, along with the three other coaches, Hayes, Hayes, Harvey, and and Enright. Uh, I think Saint puts it best here. So many goals were outright crazy. I agree. We just listed off the top of our head the the um the the Seb Ross slash Dustin Martin goal, the Mitch Owens slash Patrick Cripps goal, the the Brad Hill slash Brad Hill goal. Um, <laughs> just a phenomenal phenomenal performance. Um, in terms of oh, all over the ground, but also in front of goal. Caminiti's goal on the run was good. Obviously, Jack Higgins had those five snags. That was just utterly impressive and just just I'm lost for words at the moment, to be honest with you, Max. I'm just just gobsmacked. Who who would have who would have thought it? Four and oh after four rounds on top of the ladder with a, a big game coming up against Collingwood, which we will get into in a bit. Yeah, didn't we let everyone know at the pub afterwards that we were four and oh, didn't we, Jordan? <laughs> Oh, that was that was very exciting going to, to platform twenty eight, and then uh, off to the SB afterwards, and all our Saints gear. That was yep. very exciting to to have all the people coming up to us, and um, yeah, just engaging with all the other Saints fans that we saw, and have people coming up to us telling us how good St Kilda were and how excited they were for us. It was just a tremendous experience. Yeah, un- unreal. Uh, guy, guys mentioning poor Ben Long. Got a feel for him to see what's the whole thing going on. Um, yeah, he had a, had a bit of a quiet one on on Saturday night, didn't he? Didn't didn't yeah. make much of an impact. No, I think he just had the nine touches. But look, Stocker is taking his role to a next level. Twenty six touches for Stocker, seven marks. Didn't lay a tackle, but. Really, really was a link-up player between the uh, the halfback line and the midfield, getting in a lot of handball chains. And whilst Ben Long, we, we've said before, wasn't maybe the most skilled player, but he brought a lot of intensity and a lot of effort. And that's something you could never criticise for, for Longy. And that's that's why we loved him. I think Stock has just elevated that class a little bit, taken Ben Long's position. Still got that same physicality, that same grunt. Um, and he's an awesome teammate. Uh, Mason Wood got knocked over right in front of me, about three rows in front of me. Stocker was the first to get to whoever it was, um, let him know that that wasn't okay. And, yeah, I, I, love, the, I love the teamwork and the, the want he has to, to better his teammates, Liam Stocker. Um, so, yeah, unfortunate for Long, but, yeah, at least we've got Stocker that's putting a little bit more class in that role. And speaking of someone else who's performing really well off halfback, Ryan Burns, Christopher's... Giving him his props, great game. I agree. He was also all over the ground. Um, it seems to be a big, big part of his game at the moment is to be covering territory. I think he was was it some some stat the other week about him covering the most ground, second second most ground in a game or or like all time or something. Um, and yeah, yeah, another 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 saint who was all over the ground on on Saturday night and just yeah, is his kicking skills have improved. I think people still give him. A bit of, you know, knock on him a bit for his kicking skills, but I thought they were also much improved on Saturday night. Bet's mentioning Higo's positivity, and it's a good segue to who we were just about to talk about next. Just radiates. His smile is incredibly infectious, Beth. I agree. I want him to do well, as I know he cares so much for the team and our club. He's got so much to give. And Jack Higgins, if I can... We found this little photo on Facebook. I think Channel Nine posted it of Little Jack. I think that was after a yeah after a huge win against Brisbane. I think that was two thousand four, two thousand five. What's that? He's got a little. Is that a cherry ripe in, in his mouth? I'm not quite sure, but clearly very excited. Oh, two thousand five clash. My apologies. And yeah, just just smile as infectious as it was all those years ago. So I, I agree with you, Beth. Just just an absolute great character to have around the club, and good on him for discovering discovering form at this point in the season. Yeah, has has nine goals in the last two games. So I'm sure that young Jack Higgins would be very proud of the way older Jack Higgins has performed as of recent. Yeah, it's great. It's great. We've spoken about this a couple of times on the show. It's just awesome to say that we've got so many St Kilda people at St Kilda. 
you talk about not only our coaches, uh, Lyon obviously coached before, Lanny Hayes and, and Robert Harvey, Brendan Goddard's come back, all in coaching roles that are benefiting our young boys. But look, you think, uh, sorry, Higgins, Windhager, uh, Stocker, these guys were all saners growing up. Zach Jones was a saner growing up. Like there's so many you can put. And I think that's, that's something that's really special about our club and a, a big point of difference. It's not too many clubs that you can say have not only coaches, uh, people working for them, and the players that that have all grown up with Saints in their in their blood. So I think that's a real point of difference for our club, and it's something really to be proud of. All right. Well, we'll move on from Jack Higgins a bit and talk about the the upcoming gather round. Um, we spoke about this before the show briefly. Max, did you want to touch on the the Sandville Saints? It seems like we've got a lot of guys from from South Australia on our list and how great is it that we're going to, to South Australia for one round? Mm, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I think we're probably, we, uh, sorry, Marshy probably touched on it in the podcast. I think he's right in saying that we're the mo- we've are the we got the most Sandful players or the most Adelaide players outside of the two Adelaide teams. Whilst not all of them are going to play, unfortunately, on, on Sunday night, we've got, it, it feels like a second home game to us. We've got that many SANFL players, a lot of guys that grew up in, in the, Adelaide region, it's yeah we are the Sandful Saints on on Saturday night. Uh, sorry, Sunday night. Um, hopefully, hopefully there's a big mob of Saints or Adelaide Saints and and they get around them. All right. Well, and in looking forward to gather around, we'll take you through some of our, some of the vision that Ball Magnets an Instagram account has posted about the Saints and has described why we are four and zero at the moment and how we can utilize this to the best of our advantage against the Pies. If I can just pull it up on screen now, there we are. So this is the key to why St Kilda are four and zero. And straight down the spine to Ainsworth. Congratulations. To ben Ainsworth, game well, just having a look at Dan Butler there. 16 draft. Miller worked hard to get there, but spilled it into trouble. Quick enough to hand it off to Roses. Swallow sends it along the king direction. He couldn't really get there for the fly. Got there for the crumb. And just having a look at the effort, it seems it was mentioned on the podcast how just everyone's putting effort down back, and everyone's uh, making a, yeah a concerted effort to to defend not just the having the defenders to, to rely on. And if we'll take a look at Owens, the positions in here. Higgins. Got good coverage behind it here, the Suns. Aggression goes. He hasn't got a lot to go to. He's got Windhager short. It's his only option, and he hits him like that. Didn't work. So not just running back, but also running forward as well. We've got a lot of a lot of guys that can utilise the pace to the best of their advantage, and Windhager was another one that showed that. This year is freakish. Mm. I'm off the man of the mark and still get a smother. It's, yeah, relentless effort and something that's really, really separated us in the first four games in the other club. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Just the mm. effort and intensity that they're putting in is just just incredible. And look, we're 50, as the, the, the Zoom shows, we're 50 points up. So, you know, there's just something really, really special. Tonight. Miller, it off the Love this as well, by Mason Wood, open player of the game. game and gets right back on the goal line, ball. take the mark instead of letting Anderson. a goal run through by Anderson. And and yeah, relentless effort. Yeah. And you love to see it. Well, yeah, I kept screaming it all night long um, in my seat. And even when we went out afterwards, try and beat the zone. Ross Lyon is such a defensive wizard. And the fact that everyone's, as we said before, bought into his system, bought into the fact that we all can run. As long as you outrun everyone, you're going to get more reward for effort. Um, yeah, just try and beat the zone <laughs> is all I'm going to say. Yep, and a really good tone setter as well because that was in the first 15 seconds of the game. So it just goes to show how Mason Wood has become such an important player for us and really, yeah, emblematic of the way that we're, that, um, you know, guys that, Aren't known in the in an average AFL household have really become our leaders at the at at this point in time. Yeah, Natalie absolutely. agrees. Oh, sorry, Natalie agrees. The defenders have made a big difference. Yeah, Natalie. It's not just the defenders, but yeah, Callum Wilkie, Dougal Howard, Josh Battle, all of them. Liam Stocker, Wangani Miller. They can all hold their heads high. Just a fantastic couple of games for the defenders. 
Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, Beth's asking if we've gotten our eyes on anyone to recruit. I understand how you feel, but the boys have such with have such polish and talent, a really smart backing. Yeah, I agree, Beth. I don't think we should be looking at. Uh, I think we had this question about two weeks ago, was it? About looking at guys um, that we could bring into the club. I think I saw a couple of comments earlier about Ben King. I think whether he was disgruntled after the game or during the game, potentially. But we're flying so well at the moment, it's probably best to focus on what we have rather than what we can get. Max, what do you think? Yeah, and like we said this a couple of weeks ago, it's great to, to think of all the players we can try and get into the club and try and recruit, especially with this newfound system and and newfound hopefully winning mantra at the Saints. Um, yeah, we, we don't know who's going to be free agents, though, in, in 20 weeks' time, even I don't know, 30 weeks' time, whatever free agency sort of opens up. Players now may be speculating that they may leave. Like there was something about Gresham today, waiting until later on in the year to, to make their decisions. And I think around the buy rounds is when we might start to see players opening up and we'll really see how clubs are going if players want to leave or stay. So, yeah, we may touch on that in a fair few weeks. Uh, Dave's loving how relevant the Saints are this year and the fact that it's mainly the young lads that are driving us forward this season is brilliant. Couldn't have got off to a better start, Dave, 4-0. Um, a lot of people seem to think that we haven't played anyone of substance, which is interesting given we smack the dogs who have gone on to beat both Brisbane and Richmond, who are trying to make the finals. We've also beaten Essendon, who were in the top four and are certainly much improved from last year. However, it is brilliant to see that we are being driven by the young guys, isn't it, Max? Yeah, we've. I don't know who has who has been raiding our core recently, but. But the young guys we've got coming through, Nassau, Wanganin, Malira, uh, Mitch Owens, as we touched on, Windhager, Caminiti, Ronnie Burns is still really young. Hunter Clark still really young. Uh, I'm sure there's someone I'm forgetting. Ma- Max King's still really young. Like We've got such a such a great core of young kids coming through. And it's I think what's maybe let us down in years gone by is those senior players not stepping up to the level that they have. But, geez, what leaders they've been. And then the, the young boys are just falling right through. It's... um. Yeah, it's awesome to see. Uh, Guy, I think he's responding to another chat, but he's mentioned that's why we don't lift the lid off anytime soon. Great start. Hope we make finals. Hope we've seen this all before. Please forgive my reluctance to hold up a cup just yet. Uh, we <laughs> touched on it, uh, not we, but it was touched on in the podcast about fan excitement. And I've got to say that there were a, a few saints at the game in the section that I was sitting in that were quite a bit almost lethargic and and almost uninterested. Like it was quite quiet whenever we scored goals and when we were all clear, even clearly on top, it was a bit, you know, a bit sour faces. So I'm not sure whether that was just a one-off, but I think we need to, uh, I think some, some positivity is always good. You know, this isn't, this isn't a club that's, you know, built off the back of success. It even says so on our website, Um, which is, you know, go look it up if you don't believe me, but yeah, just just potentially maybe not be talking about premierships at this point in time, but I do think, you know, you are allowed to be excited and, and should be excited because by all by all means, we have started the season fantastically. That doesn't mean we're necessarily that we're going to win a premiership, but you have every reason to be excited about things to come and every reason to be excited, to be confident about next week and the Carlton game and, and weeks beyond. Dave reckons the Saints and the Pies move the ball offensively very similar, but the Saints crop concentrate and prioritise pressure and team defence rather than pure offence. Um, I think that's that's a bit unfair to, to say that Collingwood don't prioritise pressure. You know, we've seen one Brisbane game that, that sort of did expose Collingwood's defence a little bit, but I'm sure Craig McRae has focused very heavily on Colin. I think they're in the top like top four, top five in terms of pressure rating. Um, sorry, not pressure rating, defensive rating. So I think the main difference is probably we go down more more down the line more when Colin would tend to to go through the midfield, uh, to go through the centre of the ground more. Max, what do you what do you see as the main difference between us and the Pies? Yeah, look, I think the Pies, when they they sort of move the ball as, as maybe five, six people in a handball chain, they move it as a group, as, as a group whereas we're more of a run and 
run and kick kind of team. Yes, we'll release the hands whenever we can, but it's always release the hands, run a bit, kick. Collingwood seem to get the ball out of stoppage, three, four players around them, and it's all just handballs before they kick. And I think that's why they're so they've been so dynamic as of recently, because the second they can release the hands as fast as possible, get the ball to the middle of the ground, that's when they kick. Um, granted, we're not AFL experts, we're not AFL analysts. That's just sort of what we've what I've noticed anyway. Um, so I, I think we move the ball in in different ways. It's more about how we set up behind the ball. I think is what our separator is compared to Collingwood. There, they win the ball at the contest, and whilst yes, that's what we've been doing as well. We're just so set up, we're so sound behind the ball that when we do turn it, or when the other team does turn it over, we're we're able to rebound really well. Not to say that Collingwood don't do that, but that's probably a stronger point for us than them. All right, well, we've got a bit of an injury update. We'll move forward to talk about next week a bit. Jack Bytel, um, Max, do you have any any updates on Jack Bytel for us? Yep, he's been clear of an injury, everyone on the ground. Geez, it was sickening. He thought thought we did a knee injury, same sort of knee that was strapped up. Um, yeah, no, no worries whatsoever. It just seems to be be a little ankle roll or something like that. Nothing too serious. Might even be back in the side this week as the Medi sub or, or may work himself into the team. But, um, yeah, nothing to be concerned about with Jack Bartel. Should be good to go, if not this week, definitely next week. Yep, and the other person who is currently a test to be in the side come Sunday is Tim Membry, and that leaves us with, well, not us, we're not the selectors as much as we'd like to be, I'm sure and have some involvement with the St Kilda Football Club. A selector's headache is Tim Membry. So, mm. Max, in your opinion, do you think Tim, if eligible and if, well, eligible, if fit to play, do you think he will be a saint or a dragon on Sunday? I think you mean a zebra, mate. Oh, sorry, sorry, not dragon, zebra. <laughs> that, that's, oh, oops, that's a, a bit of a mishap. Yeah, will, will Tim be in the in the main squad or the VFL this weekend? Um, Yeah, I think... Look, apparently it's supposed to be a wet game in Adelaide. If it's a wet game, I think you may as well just leave the team that we had out on the weekend. Collingwood are a little bit smaller. That's been identified. They've lost Mason Cox. They've lost Darcy Cameron. Um, I'm not sure if if we need him just this week. I'm, I'm very much under the assumption that rest him, uh, especially if it's a wet game. Just let the smallest play how it is. No one really played bad on the weekend. No one, to me anyway, looks like they should be dropped unless there's injuries or, or god forbid that at training this week um look I, th- I think it's just really up to to what the the coaches see in in how we can attack collingwood offensively right now i think we've been doing an all right job of it and especially if it's going to rain that means gresham higgins butler Filippo, our, our ground ball getters are going to be really impactful and so long as cordy and and um Caminiti can bring the ball to ground um so yeah look i've got really no clue it's I'm I'm good with him in the side. I'm good with him without the side, uh, or outside of the side, I should say. Um, so long as he's back and ready to go for the Carlton game, that's all. I, that's all I matter. Yeah, I'm I'm of the opinion that we should probably let him have another week, but more so, well, the the win win situation of of make sure he's 100 percent healthy, as you mentioned before the Carlton game, but also to just reinforce the message that no one's spot on the side is safe, and you've really got to earn it. You know, I think. We had this conversation during the game, bar steel. I don't think anyone's a, a walk in into the team. So I think it's really important. caminiti has been playing well. Uh, all, the, all the forwards, Mitch Owens, all the key forwards have been playing really well. And no one deserved to be dropped, like you mentioned. Perhaps Zane Cordy, but he was he was far from terrible. He was he was doing all the little things, getting the balls to ground. Um, so I think uh, having, having another week off for Tim Membry, maybe you know, play half a game, three quarters of a game through VFL um, and give him another week off to, to really show that he belongs on this side. And, yeah, and like you mentioned, the the wet, the wet game also, you know, could be a factor to, to consider. All right. Well, speaking of the Pies, it does look like Jack Crisp is going to play, fortunately for them, unfortunately for us, because apart from last week, yeah, he has um he has had a terrific career at Collingwood and is clearly a very impactful player. How do you 
well, not just necessarily Jack Crisp, but there is is there any one player at the Pies that you would play uh, that you would pay particular attention to on the weekend? Yeah, look, Collingwood are really dangerous with the ball, as we mentioned before. Dugowie's having a great season. Scott Penlebury looks like doesn't look like a 34, 35 year old, whatever he is nowadays. I think the biggest player though is is Nick Dacos. I've got his averages up in front of me. He is averaging 34 and a half touches and a goal a game. He's freakish right now. He's just been given uh, every bit of leeway off the half back line. But I think as as we've sort of done to star players. Um, the, the first four rounds of the year. So long as we keep his disposals, more than 50% of his disposals in our in our uh, 50% of the ground, then I think we'll be right. I think he's especially damaging when he gets those handball receives, when he's kicking inside 50, and even if he's having a uh, having a ping at goal, all his work is really done in the front uh, front 50 of the game. Um, so long as we can limit the, his his touches to the back half, I think we'll be all right. Um, this is a game though that I'm I'm quietly quietly um confident about i think that we can we saw what brisbane did oscar McInerney, especially with no ruckman for for brisbane Roland marshall hopefully has that same output give the give the midfielders a first first crack at the ball uh, and i think hopefully there that's that's where the game's won or lost um yeah i don't know i think nick dacos is is the biggest one to to sort of maybe get attention, but there's there's so many players at Collingwood that are that are lethal with the ball. If you take out Nick Dacos, there's going to be someone else that steps up. So I'm not quite sure what we do. What what are your thoughts about it, Jordan? Um, I'm not sure about tagging Nick Dacos either. I think it's a really tough question. There was a lot of a lot of talk in the media about him being a bit soft, and um, it was mentioned on the podcast about that maybe we should put a body on him. I'm not sure that. He's obviously a terrific player and criticisms during the midweek about um, you know, his softness I think are a bit uncalled for. I'm not sure if you've seen that vision of him pulling out of a, of a challenge, you know, a, about to have his head over the ball and then looks up. He's hit, almost like he heard footsteps of a Brisbane player behind him, but no one was there. Um, people called him a bit soft, but, you know, the same people calling him, calling him soft for not putting his head over the footy wouldn't put their head over a can of soup. So... I'm not not too sure whether the criticism of Dacos is warranted. That being said, I'm not sure if we should, you know, give him the respect of of putting another player on him. I think it sends a big compliment his way if we put someone like Jack Bytel or or Ryan Burns on him, um, and also takes away the benefits of having someone like Ryan Burns being able to cover all over the ground offensively. One one player that I am worried about a bit for the pies if he does come back in is Jack Ginevan because of his he, just an absolute freakish ability to to kick goals it seems from anywhere um I'm I'm trusting our defense can handle it but I'll be interested to see who Ross Lyon if there's one guy that we should tag I, I reckon Jack if he comes back into the side just because of his x factor who would you say would have would you place on on Mr. Ginevan, our best defender, to lock him up? Yeah, look, this is a really tough week for our for Collingwood small forward. Sorry, for our back back smalls and, and Collingwood small forwards. Uh, that's also a point of difference that they've probably got compared to other sides. Uh, Elliot, Bobby Hill. If uh, if Ginevan comes back into the side, they've got a lot of lot of smalls that can kick goals, very similar to us. Um, it's a shame we don't have Webster in the side because this is one week that I probably would play. Patton and Webster together. Um, I think Patton, Patton takes Ginevan or he takes Jamie Elliott, one of the two. Maybe Stocker even goes to Jamie Elliott just because he's a little bit bigger body and Jamie Elliott we know loves to fly. Um, more so, look, you, you make a great point about the small forwards. I thought Ash Johnson as well. He's very, very athletic. I think he could have a big game. They're playing him as a ruckman, more so as the fourth midfielder as opposed to a ruckman, but... Look, he can be. I think he can be really damaging. He looks very similar to Mitch Owens in the way he moves across the ground, way he attacks the ball and, and gets to contest. So, look, we could speak about every Pies player and we could speak about every one of ours players. But let, let us know what you think, Sainers. Um, what, what your what your game plans would be going into Sunday night with the uh, probably the game of the week apart from the Adelaide and Port games because that's obviously in Adelaide.
Yeah, well, there were there was some speaking of gather round. Obviously, I think it's a, a great idea that is being played in Adelaide, and um, you know, try and get more footy engagement in that state, and try and you know boost the Adelaide economy and and all that all that jazz. There were some calls to bring the Pies Saints game, given it, it will probably be the game of the round, um, at least for for a Victorian side. That is. Um, bring it back to Melbourne, play to the MCG in front of 80,000 people. Max, what's your opinion on this? Because personally, I, I think that defeats the whole purpose of Gather Round to, to move games back to Victoria, who seem to get a Gather Round every week. Yeah, look, I think uh, as a Saints fan, we don't get to play in front of 80,000 people very often. So I think it'd be really cool if we if we played them at the G at Melbourne. But look, that's that's not to be. I th- yeah, I love, the, I love the idea of or the concept of Gather Round, playing games that... In Adelaide, maybe next year it moves to Perth or it goes to Sydney. Like it, it hopefully it bounces around the next next few years, and hopefully it's a uh, success in Adelaide. I'd also love to see like a backyard footy type round where you play in the country towns, you play a game at maybe Victoria Park or, or RSCA Park where it's just the members round. Or I know it's not something that the AFL would probably ever do, but it's great for the members. It's great to get that country sort of feel back to the footy, um, especially if you want to diversify and. And move the game and expand the game all across Australia. I think that's the biggest uh, biggest way you do it is is just getting um, fans involved in, in any way you can. And you know what? Sometimes playing a game in front of 15,000 people, as you see it uh, in the NRL, is better than playing it in front of 25,000 people, but the stadium's only at, quarter capa- uh, at a quarter capacity. Um, I think that's something that the NRL does probably a little bit better than than the AFL is is putting games on when... Yeah, no, there's not going to be a big crowd, so they'll maybe reduce the numbers slightly and play it at a at a country country field. But the atmosphere is electric because the stadium is packed out, um, and hopefully that's what it is at Adelaide all all games this week. So, look, don't bring gather round back to Melbourne, although it would be pretty cool to to see a Saints game in front of eighty thousand people. That's not a final. Yep, we got a couple of comments in about the Pies game. Chris reckons Burns on Dacos, Patton on Elliot, Stocker on Ginevan. Uh, I think that's probably the, in terms of how the way they play and their 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 traits, that's probably the best matchup. Burns can run all over the place. Patton's probably got the best run and jump in terms of compare well, comparatively to to Burns and Stocker. And Stocker, I'm not sure how he'll go in terms of locking down his direct opponent. I don't think we've seen uh, a small forward like Ginevan test someone like Liam Stocker yet, but we'll see how we go. It's a, it's a good suggestion and one that, you know, Ross Lyon may be thinking of behind the scenes. Jesse's mentioning had to go. Should have, well, wish he came to us after Sunday's game. Crouch will nail him. I hope so. You know, Crouch is a big bodied midfielder like to who's obviously having a great year. Uh, would be quite interesting to see if Crouch can get the better of him on Sunday. Yeah, that'll be a great matchup. Won't it? Just two, two absolute bulls in, in the midfield and yeah, it's a shame to go. He didn't come to the saints, especially the way he started his season. But look, as of now we, we've started off perfectly. So maybe we don't need him after all. Uh, guys saying our ruck will determine midfield gets and without their big ruck cheek that I, that left, I feel good about a midfield worried. If our forwards don't fire too much pressure on Wilkie battle and Patton will hurt us. Yeah, I agree with the last point, guy. That any any pressure on on a def- or too much pressure on a defense, no matter how good they are, the damn wall eventually bursts. I'm not too sure about the the cheating ruck, if that's in reference to to Brody Grundy. I'm not sure what he's done to to cheat. I'm not not sure about that one. Um, but yeah, obviously structurally, it was it was interesting on on Thursday night to see how Collingwood responded without their ruckman. They gave away two free kicks in the centre of the ground that led to two Brisbane goals because of the 6-6-6 rule. Um, and that was because they weren't used to playing with a Ruckman, so they weren't, without a Ruckman, sorry. So they weren't used to deciding between Ash Johnson and Dan McStay who who goes in the Ruck. So um, they'll have a bit more experience with dealing with playing without a Ruckman. Um, so I don't think it'll be, I don't think the game will be, even in the best case scenario, as big a blowout as, as the Brisbane one because Collingwood also missed a few set shots and they had more scoring shots than Brisbane. But, yeah, I think it's really important, the the midfield battle on, on Sunday. Max, what would you say is 
probably apart from the the ruck battle, which Roe needs to win. Well, if, if Roe can't win against Ash Johnson and Dan McStay, with all due respect, he probably shouldn't be uh, an All Australian ruckman. But where do you think our biggest matchup is? Is it our defence versus their forwards? Is it the midfield battle? What do you, what do you see? Yeah, sorry, just touching on that on that ruck battle. Um, I, I think I know everyone loves how how Rowan Marshall's gone about it. I don't quite think he's at an All Australian form just yet. He's been beaten in the ruck contest more times than not. And yes, he's been getting disposals around the ground, but he probably hasn't been been using those disposals as efficiently as as he probably could be. Um, I say that because he's I set him to such a high standard. I think he's he's an all Australian ruckman and he's up there with Tim English and, and should be up there with Tim English as yeah, the two best rucks in the comp right now. I think the Gorn Grundy era may be coming to a bit of an end. Um, After look, four weeks, that's a pretty short era. <laughs> no, 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 I meant separately when Grundy was at the, uh, at the pies and, and oh, Gorn yeah. was at Melbourne because now they're sort of mitigating each other's output. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. should have clarified that a little bit more, but uh, yeah, Tim English and Ryan Marshall should be the two best rucks just because they're of their work around the ground. And I think this needs to be a three-vote game for, for Ryan Marshall. We he, He's going to be the one that I think wins us or loses, wins or loses us the game. Um, not to just put that on one player. It's all matched up across the ground. I think, yeah, as, as we mentioned before, the defender forward matchups, um, our defence there forwards against Collingwood is going to be probably the biggest, biggest setback because... If it's a wet game, geez, their their forwards are going to be lethal. Uh, just some normal guy reckons Ross performed nicely, so if he keeps up his effort, we have a nice mid mid to forward transition. I agree. Both Seb Ross and Ross the boss perform nicely. You know, Seb Ross are out in the field and Ross the boss up in the coach's box. Um, but yeah, played a good transition game. I think our deliveries inside fifty were probably a bit under where we'd like to be at this point in the year. But in ter- uh, yeah, in terms of Seb Ross personally, I think his his delivery inside fifty was great. Yep, agreed. Jesse's opinion: members in will push uh, Filippo up on the wing. Wood will have a field day. Max, what do you what do you think about pushing Filippo up further up the ground? Yeah, I don't mind it. He he had eighteen touches and a goal playing midfield in at least the second half of the game. I noticed him attend a few CBAs, but. Yeah, Wood isn't someone we haven't touched on um, this week, which is funny because he didn't have a down game at all. Um, we've been hyping him up and he still continued on his form, 24 touches on the weekend, just didn't get the goal, unfortunately. But yeah, I think Wood, um, as we said, he might be a big point of difference as well compared to the Collingwood um, midfield slash wingers. They, apart from Ash Johnson, I don't think they really have anyone that's going to take marks going forward um on the wing so yeah hopefully wood also has a great game um and hopefully it's not too wet that you know that mitigates all marking completely on the weekend uh xavier reckons marshall should give our mids first use hope we can cash in yeah like max said marshall needs to have a big game big three vote game so a lot of work during the week will no doubt on Collingwood's side be focused on where Marshall taps the ball and his, his ruck tendencies. So hopefully he can change things up a bit and our mids are, are you know, not reliant on on Marshall's former, I guess, well, his his tendencies and they, they come up with some new strategies to, to counter Collingwood's heavy focus on him as a ruckman. Marshall subbed off great la, late last game. Great management. I agree. Was he subbed off early? Early first quarter was it, Max? Yeah, early in the fourth quarter. I, I listened to Ross's presser at the end of the game. He said that they were going to pull the plug at three quarter time, but they just wanted to make sure that that Gold Coast didn't kickstart a run or anything like that um, early on in the fourth quarter. They saw that in the first five to ten minutes and went, "No, nah, all good. Get Marshall off. Let's rest him for the." for a big game against Collingwood, and, and hopefully that works. Hopefully that pays off. All right. Well, I think we're nearing the end here, Sainers. But just to just to wrap things up, we'll go with one word to how you're feeling for Sunday. We'll each we'll each give a word, and then we'll, we'll filter through a couple of, of your words for Sunday, come up with some creative ones. 
Uh, Max, how are you? How are you feeling for Sunday's game? Um, oh, I I think I'm feeling very excited. Um, that's the only way I can sort of put it. There's excitement in the air. I think I said that ahead of the one fiftieth, and if we've done this before, um, yeah, I think I think just excitement. It's going to be probably yeah the best game of the round. Hopefully, it is anyway. It's not a slogging either way. It's um a good hard fought contest and. Hopefully we really step up to the occasion and we show why we belong on top of the ladder. We don't sort of crumble under the pressure, which we have in years gone by. Um, I really trust Ross. I trust the system. And, and yeah, I'm not worried about um, – not worried about the game as I was maybe three weeks ago against the Dogs or, or even Essendon going into it. So, yeah, excitement. Um, yeah, how about you, Jordan? Yeah, I'm going to say – I'm going to say tranquil. Um, for the first time, I think in a long time, I'm not not too worried about the Saints' upcoming game. You know, win, win, lose, or maybe draw. Hopefully, not draw after you know past experiences with Collingwood. But yeah, just really calm because win or lose, I know that we're going to put up a good performance. Um, you know, if we lose, we've lost to a very good side, and if we win, you know, we're on top of the world and on top of the ladder still. So just, just, just calm. Just, I think that's my my word of the week, which is you know. It's always good to be calm, isn't it? Yeah, always good to be calm. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go through a couple of comments just before we end. Uh, like Beth, also my AFL fantasy also took a bit of a hit for Rowan Marshall coming off in the fourth quarter. I'm sure <laughs> yours also did, Max. Oh, mate, don't even get me started on the super coach scores. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, yep. Nick reckons hot Saints, cold pies. Good call, Nick. Hopefully the, the pies are freezing cold. Nonchalant, yeah. I think guy, we're also we're very relaxed at the moment, which is a good good feeling to have. Bit more than one word, but Maddox is saying up the something sainers. Um, love your enthusiasm, Maddox. Good to see. Christopher's ready. Just some normal guy. We can easily beat the wobbly collie wobbles. Well, I love your confidence. Some normal guy. Hopefully we do. Hopefully they get up. Natalie thinks it's going to be a contest. Totally agree. Um, I think it'll be a, a well-fought battle. Xavier reckons it's going to be a process. That, that seems to be Ross's word at the moment, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's a process. It's, it's yeah, always leading to something bigger and better. Some normal guys also hopeful. And Beth has created a new word, which I like very much, nerve-sided. So yes, Beth. Um, I'd say maybe not not so much for me this week. Maybe Max, if you're a bit nervous and excited, would you say you're nerve sided? Yeah, I'm, I'm nerve sided. Yeah, why not? I like that. It's a good word. I love it, Beth. All right, well we'll leave it there, Sainers. Thank you oh, all for joining. Oh, hold on. We'll just. Do you want to quickly oh. do a prediction for for Sunday, Arvo? We haven't done scores or anything like that. Yeah, uh, we haven't. Um, I can't remember our scores from last time. I'm going to say St Kilda St Kilda by 7 and we win in a low scoring contest because of the the likely wet weather 65 to 72. Okay, yeah, I was thinking something similar. Yeah, I was thinking a low scoring contest, hopefully only 10 to 13 goals, maybe even 10 to 12 goals will be somewhere in there. Um hopefully the Saints get up by uh, yeah, around 10 points, maybe two goals. Um, yeah, I'm just hoping it's going to be uh, Nick's just put in 77 Saints, 15 pies. Yep. Yeah, some normal guy, Saints by, is that a million, a billion? Oh, yeah. that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, hopefully hopefully we get up and go 5-0 and we put all the, uh, the haters to rest that we haven't played anyone good as of yet. Yep, Jeff Evans, 62 points. I like it, Jeff. Max, do you want to you hit us with your final score? Oh, um, what did you say? Sixty-five, seventy-two. Yeah. So what? That's about. Oh, I'll put. All right, I'll do something like seventy to seventy-eight, Saint Kilda. All right. Well, we'll leave it there, Sainers. Ch is hoping for a sensational game on Saturday. I know uh, it's Sunday. Sorry, I know it'll be a sensational game. That's for sure. And I like your profile picture very much, Ch. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's it from us. Have a good week, Sainers.
Yep, awesome. We'll see you down at the Bentley Social, 3 p.m. Sunday. Get down there. Yep. Um, yeah, it should be, should be a very awesome awesome Sunday afternoon, top off gather round and, yeah, a few drinks, bit of great food at the Bentley Social and, and we'll do some entertainment or something like that. Um, that's Mar- Marshy, Joycey and Jakey. They'll, they're the ones organising it all. Um, we're just there to look pretty if we, if we are there. Well, at least I'll be there, Jordan. I'm not sure about yourself. Yep, yeah, I'm... Uh... Seeing where the wind t- seeing where the wind blows me at this stage, but um yeah, make sure you wear your Saints merch for twenty percent off. It's always good seeing wacky Saints memorabilia that that everyone has. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen a couple couple Saints bathrobes available on eBay recently, and thought about buying one myself. So if you've got a Saints <laughs> bathrobe, make sure to wear one. But any Saints wacky Saints memorabilia, everyone loves a, a good story and a good something to laugh at. So yeah, make sure to wear it. But any Saints merch twenty percent off at the Mentally Social. All right, that'll do it from us. Have a good week, Sainers. Awesome. See you guys. See ya.